Yo, Elliot, in the beginning of my relationship, our polarity switched. We lived at my mother's house. She worked full time. I wasn't making much money as I am now. And I was under the spell of my many vices and demons. I slayed most, but I have daily battles. During the time of my heavy addictions, I committed adultery. Since then, I've repented and given myself to the Lord. God allowed me to get caught by my future wife. We plan on getting married within the next couple months. She knows my journey in becoming a strong, masculine, godly man. Since then, she's forgiven me. I have chopped off the hand that caused me to sin. I've muted my many women on Instagram. I train at the Strength Camp Gym with mostly men. I have more men that see my story now because of the red pill masculine content I share. And lately, when our discussions and arguments get very heated, she keeps bringing up the past and uh, it holds it over me. I did what I did and I'm willing to pay for my consequences. I understand she's human and forgiving is one of the toughest things to do, which is why the Bible preaches forgiveness. With that being said, is there any way for true forgiveness for us to move on or accept the consequences head on and move on? By the way, you and your wife should most definitely have a marriage camp. I see how most men today are on the path of becoming better and that'll lead their families to staying and growing stronger together. Appreciating God bless. Well, just to uh, clarify what he's talking about, if you've seen uh, one of the more popular videos on my Strength Camp channel over the past few months, it's already up to almost 50,000 views. I don't get views like I used to. Um, it was one about uh, marriage talks with my wife. And it was the day after she and I did a talk at the 21 convention about our marriage. And we answered some questions and it was about inter intersexual dynamics and you know things of that nature, marriage. Anyway, on the YouTube video, I mentioned that we're thinking about doing it, you know, maybe a camp, right? We do something where couples can come and they can learn from us because we have a little bit to offer. We, you know, we've been together for going on 30 years and we are very happy with each other. We have a great relationship. I will tell you this as it relates to you and your situation. My wife is very forgiving. I, and I didn't do anything to deserve that. I am blessed in that she forgets. And it's not just with me. She, there's things that have, you know, her parents have said and done to her or other people in her life and in her family um, that she doesn't like that was upsetting to her, but she moves on. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful, it's a wonderful quality. It's a wonderful trait. One of which I never want to take fully, I never want to take advantage of because I realize like my wife w will forgive me. She will forgive me. I had just better not screw up that much that I put her in a situation where she needs to. But I've made mistakes in the past. I've done and said things to her or, you know, forgotten things or just, you know, I make mistakes. I'm a guy too. And she never brings up the past. She'll never bring up the past. She never brings it up again. She'll be upset. She'll definitely be upset. And I have to let her be upset when she's upset, right? If she's upset, it's like, well, she's justified. You could be upset for right now. But she gets over it very quickly, a day or two. And she even says, you know, my wife is very rational. She'll say, I'm upset right now. Just let me be upset. I'll be, I'll get over it if you let me be upset. I, you know, I remember this. This hasn't happened in many, many years, but I remember our, when we were younger. Um, we don't fight at all anymore. We have no arguments. And I think that's a part of what I want to discuss with you here. Um, but when we were younger, there were things that would come up every once in a while. And, you know, I would just have to let her be angry. She'd get over it. And I'd never hear about it again. And... I have to say, right, because you can look at this from many different perspectives, right? You could look at it from, from her angle, or if you're a woman and you're listening to this, you could say, oh, well, then your man just thinks he can get away with anything, right? Your man, you don't hold him accountable. You're not going to, you know, lord it over him. You're not going to beat him down with it. You're not going to bring it up later on, right? Like, what are you, some kind of weak, wishy-washy woman, right? You can look at it that way, and a lot of people do, right? Your wife might be thinking the same thing, like, well, I got to use this, right? I got to use this against him to get what I want. You can look at it that, you can look at it that way. But the way I look at it and the way I experience it is that that builds confidence in me in that I'm not going to spend the rest of my life tippy toeing around my wife trying not to make any mistakes. And this is what ends up happening with a lot of men. And this is where the polarity is switched. They don't take any risks in their life. They don't do it. You know, men are risk takers by nature. They're not going to take any risks. They're not going to risk making a mistake or doing something that could turn out bad because they're tiptoeing around their wife. Oh, but my wife. Oh, but my wife. Listen, first of all, because she doesn't do that, it allows, it gives me the freedom to make big decisions, to make risky decisions. 
But it also gives me the state of heart never to do anything that would break hers. Do you see what I'm saying? Because she's so good. I, 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 I couldn't do it like adultery, right? Like that's a tough one, right? I get it. She wasn't even your wife, right? Now I know my wife I, and I don't know anything. I really don't know anything, but just from past, from, from, from just her nature, maybe she would forgive me, right? Right? If, 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 she, if I got caught doing what you're doing, right? Which I'm not doing. So there's nothing to catch. <laughs> right? Um, and, but I know that you would forgive me. I would hate to take advantage of that. That's what I said before, right? I, I would hate to take advantage of that. And so the reason why I'm saying this is because maybe women are listening or maybe, you could, you may, maybe this is something that you guys would talk to your women about. But I think that it is better when a woman doesn't hold a negative a, a mistake over a man's head because that's just going to keep him weak and the and the polarity in a relationship will never go back to normal if she constantly has this thing over you right if she keeps bringing up this thing and holding it over you that's her asserting her dominance every time she does that she's asserting her dominance she's like oh you want to go out with your friends we remember that time oh you want to buy a new car remember that time Oh, you're going to the gym and you're building some muscle and you're looking kind of good and you're changing your wardrobe. Remember that time? You can't do anything. You can't do anything with her going, remember that time, right? So you're stuck as a man, as a woman, you're stuck as the weaker partner in the relationship, right? And, we, and the woman is the weaker partner in the relationship, right? Who's going to win a fight? You know who's weak. But women manipulate and they, get, they, gain, they gain positions of strength over you. She ain't stronger than you. But she gained in a position of strength over you by saying, remember that time, right? So it's a, it's, a, it's a bad habit and it's not justified. I don't think it's a good thing to lord someone's mistakes over them, especially if you're in a relationship with them, especially if it's, a, if it's your husband. Because if you want this man to lead you, you, you can't denigrate him. And it sounds like she is in a habit of denigrating you through your, you say that you have heated arguments. And then she brings up the past. Not a good sign. And I would talk to her about it. I would, I would ask her to stop. I would say, and even explain to her what I'm saying to you. Listen, I want to be a good husband. I want to be a righteous leader that you want to submit to. I want to be the man that you want me to be deep in your heart. I want to be all man. I want to be the righteous man, the good man, the strong man, the patriarch, the father, right? I want to be able to do all those things. I, and you say even, I've repented and I've given myself to the Lord. I'm a man of God. I allow God to be my authority and I do all things through him, right? You're on the right path. But if you explain to her, I can't do any of this stuff if you keep your foot on my neck. I apologized. I was wrong. I repented. I'm on my upward path. You're supposed to be my helpmate, but you're dragging me down. What else do you want me to do so that we can leave this behind us? It, 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 that's the only way that you can move forward. If she going to bring this up forever. You're not going to have a relationship with her. It's not going to work out. You say lately... Our discussions and arguments have becoming very heated. What are those? And I don't want to know specifically, but if you are having heated an argument, heated discussions and arguments often in your relationship, that's a sign once again that the polarity has is still off. And I'm not saying it's all her fault, but usually I'm talking to men, so you know I I take your position. But whatever it is that's going on within the dynamics of the relationship, she don't respect you. Maybe, maybe she's justified in not respecting you. Maybe she's holding on to old stuff and not respecting you. Whatever the bottom line is, if she's constantly arguing with you in this very heated way, that means she, that your relationship is more of a power struggle than a relating to one another. Women, women, between men and women, there will always be a power struggle. Let me put it this way. There will always be a power struggle. In the Bible, it says after the Adam and Eve committed their sin, one of the things God says to Eve is that um, essentially you'll want to rule over your husband. 
You, you're going to fight with your husband. You're going to want to rule over your husband, but you will be subject to him. I don't remember the exact words, but there's this desire to, to contend with her husband, but ultimately she needs to submit herself to him. She will submit herself to him, right? And in the end, women will submit, right? Is, I mean, we could play make-believe all we want, but in the end, women will, will submit. But it doesn't mean they're weak. It doesn't mean that they're stupid. It doesn't mean that you can walk all over them. You can't. Because a woman's power, she still has power, and that power that she'll want, right? This is what he says in the Bible. You will desire your husband. You will desire to, to, to be ruler of your husband, but it won't happen. That's what he says. But you, that, desire, that desire is still there. But in a tactful, chaste woman, right? A godly woman, a good woman, it'll be covert. This is, this is how women actually exert true feminine power. It is through the covert, not the overt. An overt woman is, is cantankerous. Is that the right word? Antankerous. It is, is fighting with you, right? She's overt. She wants to outwardly fight you. But a real feminine woman will control you silently. <laughs> She will control you silently and sweetly. She'll get what she wants by yielding and passivity. I used to play this game with my brother. It was, a, it was like a martial arts game called push hands. And we put our hands together like this, right? One hand went forward and you would go back and forth and you would push like this, right? And the person who was the most yielding, the softer person, the person who was yielding to the strength of the other one, usually one because you know you want to make your play but when you make your when you make your play your push hand to push that other person over that person yields boom and watches you fall this is a woman's real strength it's not overt strength it's ugly when women try to have overt strength because now they're looking and behaving like weak men it's like you'll never be a man you'll never win against a man but you trying and it's ugly but if you're sweet you're passive you're quiet you're yielding they could get us to do all kinds of things in the right way, right? Especially if she has a good heart. My wife controls me with her passivity, with her sweetness, right? Like I say, I want to give my wife everything. I want to give my wife everything. Why? Because she's so sweet. Because she's so kind. Because she's so nurturing. Because she gives me so much, right? She has, she has power over me. Let me put it this way. She has power under me by being covert with her power. All women do. My mother used to say, I, my mother used to say that a man is the head of a family. My mom asserts that. She can't, she can't not assert it because my dad is totally a head of the family. He's the head of the family, right? He, that's just the way he is. But my mom always say, yeah, my husband's the head of the family, but I'm the neck. And the neck, what is the neck? The neck turns the head. The neck tells the head where to turn. And I see my wife doing that with me as well. My wife is not going to yell at me or denigrate me or hold, try to lord overt power over me. She's just going to very subtly turn my head in a direction that maybe she's interested in going. And I love doing that too. I feel when she's turning my head a little bit. I'm like, okay, baby, what can I do to make your life easier? Because you're such a sweet girl. And... Well, you know, maybe maybe going in this direction. And she's so sweet, she like tippy toe sometimes. Now she gets a little bit more arrogant, meaning like she's confident that I'm gonna do it. But I remember when she used to kind of like ask or just kind of like put it out there. And I'd be like, yeah, of course, babe, I want it. I want to give that to you. Yeah, let's do it, right? Knowing that I'm pouring it out for her. When men and women get along in traditional gender roles, everybody wins, everybody's happy. It works out well. The problem is feminism has told women that being covert, being feminine is weak. They just, they feminists hate femininity. That's the problem. They hate their, if I, you remember, I remember reading about early feminists and I can't remember the name of the woman, but one of her, maybe it was like Stanton, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Stanton, something like that. She hated her mother. She had, she hated her mother and she hated other women. She hated femininity. So she destroyed it. With feminism, right? She's one of the founders of feminism, first wave of feminism. And it's all, all waves are bad. 
So when a woman rejects feminism and she rejects the overt, aggressive, masculine domination over her husband, she receives all of the pleasure and power associated with covert movement, right? This is where women get their true... And in, in actuality, like I just showed you with that game, I'm kind of you know beating a dead horse here. In actuality, the person that yields is, is the stronger person, is the person that has more power, right? Whoa, right? You let me yield to you, and I get my... I get what I want. If I yield to you, I get what I want. It works that way. It works that way with women. One of the lies that the world has told, and a lot of men still believe this. I can't believe it. When I watch some of my comments and, and some of my Facebook posts and shit like that, I'm like, man, you guys are just so stupid. You fell for it. This, there's this lie that men are inherently abusive. And if given that kind of power, we're going to be all wife beaters and we're going to be degenerate drunkards that beat and rape our wives and cheat on our women and you know all this kind of shit that was a that was a characterization of the western male used to subvert the family dynamics um so it's a lie right and i hear guys saying too oh because I, I wrote something about this on facebook the other day and the craziest thing is that all these guys they're men but they don't realize they're male feminists they they assert that it's better to rape we're talking about daughters raise their daughters to be strong and independent. I'm like, no, you don't raise your daughters to be strong and independent. You raise your daughters to be good wives and, and, and mothers, right? What does the world need? The world doesn't need any more strong, independent women, fake men. That's what they are. Why do we need that? Sending them off to university for all this, all to, to become lunch meat for the frat team and to, uh, to rack up debt and to have to go out in, in the world and, and work these corporate jobs. It's a fucking farce. It's made up. It's fake. But then there's these guys who are like, well, if she don't do that, then some man is going to be bad to her. Is that so? I'm not bad to my wife. She's not a strong and independent woman. I'm a great husband to her. In fact, my brother is great to his wife. She don't have no job. She's not strong and independent. My mother is, and my father, the same thing. My dad's not bad to my mother. My mother is a, is a housewife. She's a caretaker. She's a mother. Where are they getting evidence that all these men are abusers? It's a lie. It's made up. It's a, it's a mischaracterization of the Western male so that females have a bullshit excuse for why they need to be strong, independent tax slaves. Men don't fall for it. Stop it. Stop it. I don't, if I ever hear another man say some shit like that to me, I'm, I'm going to slap him. <laughs> okay, maybe not. But, I, of course, I can't slap you. What am I going to do? But, but the point is that it's the sickest, saddest, most perverted thing to see men thinking like feminists. They, 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 they hook, line, and swinkers, sinkers swallow the bullshit. And it's unfortunate because it's not true. I think when men are being men and women are being women, everybody is happy. Everything works out well. Are, are there going to be the random guy that's a bad husband yeah of course especially in a world like this where families are de denigrated families are destroyed no one even knows that's why i want to have a camp no one even knows how to be a husband or a wife men don't know how to be husbands and wives don't know how to be wives why because their parents didn't know how to do it and their grandparents didn't know how to do it i'm grateful that i came from a home where i saw it being done and my wife was there to see it too so we can emulate what came from my home and hopefully i could be an example to many men worldwide to be good husbands and to take on good wives. But it ain't easy in a world where men have been perverted, women have been perverted, everybody's degenerate and, and screwed up. So, but will there be the random woman that's a bad woman in a world like this? Yeah, of course, but it shouldn't be the majority. And right now, <clears throat> things suck. So I pray for you guys. I, I wish the best for you guys. The bottom line is that the polarity in your relationship has not shifted for the better if she's still arguing with you and bringing up old shit and you you, you call her your fiance you say you're going to get married i would think i would think long and hard about that first and if you haven't taken a, a sex fast from her i would probably do that too i've been talking about that today right sometimes you can't see these women because you got on the sex goggles stop having sex with her for a little while 
see if the arguments keep going on, see what happens. You know, if you take a sex fast, sometimes these women lighten up because they realize, okay, ooh, okay, I have no more control over him because I'm not having sex with him. So maybe I should be nice, <laughs> right? Right? Maybe I can be nice. Maybe I can be nice to him to show him I have other value besides my twat. That might happen too. So either way, you know, shifting the dynamics back is always difficult, especially if there's if there's a lack of trust because of cheating or, or anything else like that. But it can happen. But it's going to require some work, and I think a I think a sex fast is 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 due. So, but you do you do. Hope that helps, done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.